Hi, and welcome back to another lesson in the physics video series. Today, we will be discussing kinetic energy. The word kinetic takes its root from the Greek kinetikos, which means motion. We will be studying the energy of motion. All right, let's get started. As you can see here, the formula for kinetic energy is given as 1 half m v final squared minus v initial squared. But this is a complicated expression, and we're going to take a look at the way it's given on the reference table. Here's an excerpt from the physics reference table, and you can see that we're going to be dealing with equation 20. Ke equals 1 half mv squared. So where does this formula come from? Let's take a look at a simple development. We're going to develop the kinetic energy expression 1 half mv squared. Since energy and work are interchangeable terms for the same thing, work is energy and energy is work, we're going to start with the expression w equals force times distance. We know that work is defined by the push on an object for a certain distance. So the push, the force, is mass times acceleration times a certain distance. W equals MAD. Well, what we're going to do is recall that the kinematic expression V final squared equals VI squared plus 2AD has an AD in it right here. So we have an AD right here. M-A-D. So we're going to isolate this A-D and replace it with this A-D. We're going to solve this kinematic expression for A-D and getting V final squared minus V initial squared divided by 2. Taking this expression for A-D, we're going to put that here and multiply by M. And you can see very clearly that the M times this parenthesis of AD from the kinematic expression will be multiplied through, giving us 1 half MV final squared minus 1 half MV initial squared. So this is the change of kinetic energy for an object in motion. It has an initial speed and then it has a final speed. We know that the final speed can either be faster or slower. If the final speed is faster, you must have gained energy. And of course, if the final speed is slower, you must have lost energy. As you can see, forces cause masses to accelerate. That's your F equals MA expression, thereby increasing the kinetic energy of the system if it is accelerating. However, if the system is decelerating, like we just explained, the V final is less than the V initial, then of course, you are losing kinetic energy. The worker, that's you, the person pushing the mass for a certain distance, you invest energy into that system and you convert your work energy into the kinetic energy of that system. It doesn't get the energy by itself, but it needs an investment from an outside source, which happens to be the worker. And lastly, if there's any friction present, you're pushing something and it's dragging and grinding along the surface. If you recall back to our chapter on kinematics, when we talked about static and kinetic friction, you know that friction steals away that final speed, but really what it's doing is stealing away kinetic energy from that system, which produces a lower acceleration and, of course, a slower final velocity for the same applied force. Let's take a look at a problem requiring us to calculate the kinetic energy. Here we have a 75 kilogram bicyclist coasting down a hill at a constant speed of 12 meters per second. What is the kinetic energy of the bicyclist? It's important to see that this is a constant speed because if there was changing speed, of course, we would have to look for the difference of kinetic energy. But in this case, we know that the formula Ke equals 1 half mv squared. The mass is 75 kilograms and the speed of the bicyclist is 12 meters per second. 1 half times 75 kilograms times 12 meters per second squared gives you 5.4, 10 to the 3 joules. That's how much energy the bicyclist has at that moment. As a quick note, let's see what the graph of k equals 1 half mv squared looks like. It turns out to be a parabola because the ke is on the y-axis, the v is on the x-axis, and since it's raised to the second power, that is a parabola. While we're here, let's talk about the SI unit for work that's done on any object. We know that Ke equals 1 half mv squared, and Pe is mgh. Both of these types of energy are going to prove out to have the same kind of unit. And when you have the same unit, you have the same quantity. So let's take a look at this. Work is force times distance. Force times distance is a newton times a meter. And the definition of energy is a newton meter or a joule. 
Now, in the case of kinetic energy, we have one half mv squared. Since one half doesn't have a unit, only the mass and the speed will be dealt with. Mass is in kilograms, speed is in meters per second, which happens to be squared. So, kilogram meter squared per second squared. Then I take the unit of meters out and I isolate kilograms meter per second squared, which just happens to be a newton times the remaining meter. Newton meter equals joules. Now in the case, of course, of potential energy, you get the same thing. Mass, gravity, height. Mass is in kilograms. Gravity is an acceleration measured in meters per second squared. And height, of course, is in meters. This makes it very easy. There's nothing to have to separate because it's already pre-separated for you. Kilogram meters per second squared already is a newton times the meter, also joules. Let's take a look at another problem. We're now going to use the KE equals 1 half M V final squared minus V initial squared in a sample problem. Here we have a 15 kilogram mass moving at 7.5 meters per second on a horizontal frictionless surface. It's important to note that the surface is frictionless because we won't have any friction losses to account for in this problem. What is the total work that must be done on the mass to increase its speed to 11.5 meters per second. We recognize that there's been a change of speed and we know that the work is equal to that change of kinetic energy. Now this expression here, W equals delta Ke, that's called the work energy theorem. It no longer appears on the physics reference tables, sadly, because if it did, it would help you make the connection very quickly that work is energy, and energy is work. So the work done causes the change of energy. Now we started off our lesson with Ke equals one half m v final squared minus v initial squared. So we derived this formula already in the red box. Just applying the information given in the problem gives us this. One half times 15 kilograms times 11.5 meters per second squared minus 7.5 meters per second squared. When you do the math, you get 570 joules. Now let's make a note here. You went from 7.5 meters per second to 11.5 meters per second. You got faster. The final speed is greater than the initial speed. So 570 joules was added to the system. Now what if this was the other way around? What if he started at 11.5 meters per second and he ended at 7.5 meters per second? Well, the final speed would have been slower and he would have had a negative 570 joules, meaning that energy would have come out of the system. And finally, let's look at what happens if we change the variables in the kinetic energy formula. Here's a problem where they ask you if the speed of a moving object is doubled, what would happen to the kinetic energy? Well, if Ke equals 1 half mv squared and we double the speed, 2 squared is 4. So we get 4 times the amount of Ke. That's a quadrupling effect. So what's important to understand is that speed is the most powerful variable in this problem because it is raised to the second power, whereas mass is only raised to the first power. Since mass is only raised to the first power, if I was to double the mass, I would only have double the kinetic energy. But if I double the speed, I would quadruple the energy. So there you have a basic introduction to kinetic energy and the amount of energy that's input by a force to cause a mass to change speed. When it gains speed, it gains energy. When it loses speed, whether it be due to the brakes on a car or to friction, it loses kinetic energy. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.